look at the news, let's go to Bell's Amusement Park for more 4th of July fun. Okay, thank you very much. Larry Potash back at the studio. Now, welcome back to a special Green Country Neighbor newscast. We certainly hope you're enjoying the holiday. We are here at Bell's. Bell's is really a great place for both kids and adults, but to the Bell family, it's a three-generation way of life. The postcard aerial view of the 1946 Tulsa State Fair shows where Bell's would be later, down there in the lower right-hand corner. The late Robert Kiwanis Bell, who started it all, circa 1960s, holding up the world. His son, Robbie, Jr., about the same time. Robbie, grown, and president of Bell's. Vice President and wife Sally, son and general manager Robbie, Robert Kiwanis III, son Jason, learning the business, mother Vera, matriarch. You know, we started out very humble, and I just wanted them to, to see how really humble it was. <laughs> what he's talking about is through this padlock door, when it's fixed up, painted, put back out, it'll be the only ride at Bell's that was there when the park opened in 1951 as Bell's Kitty Land. And it looks like the, the clowns are peddling this thing around. <laughs> With bowling pins. <laughs> well, for a head. <laughs> and, and it, the kids of the kids who rode this ride ride this now. There were about 500 of them in the U.S. in the 20s. The heyday of the wooden roller coaster. Barely 50 still roar today, including Zingo, the dream Robert Kiwanis Bell realized in 1968. And his dream was to have one with two heels. Yeah, that's the way he wanted, just like that. Vera admits she's only ridden Zingo six or seven times, the last time 15 years ago, maybe longer. But still, there's something about riding a roller coaster that makes you feel good. And I just wondered if you ever felt the, mm -hmm. the need. If you it. like that hollow feeling in the pit of your stomach, I guess you do that. <laughs> <laughs> and people have been laughing and having fun at Bells for more than 40 years. And the Bells understand that. After all, it is an amusement park. It's great because, you know, it, um, the world can be awful tough on people. And it's nice when you own a facility where people can come and let loose and forget about all their problems and go have some fun with the kids. And just like the owners, some Bells fans are third generation, letting loose, getting scared, and having fun on a favorite ride or at a favorite spot. One of my favorite spots at Bells has always been right here because I walked by this column, I don't know how many times, before I finally figured out that it wasn't a column, it's a flagpole. And when it was built in May of 1981, it was the tallest flagpole west of the Mississippi River at 151 feet. Now that was videotape and this is live. That same flag is flying today. It is a 30 by 60 foot American flag. And there's a beautiful breeze on this Independence Day to carry it high, wide, and handsome across Bell's Midway and Amusement Park. So it's still flying, and Beth has a special guest. Beth? Yes, Clayton, thank you. You know, performers take the stage tonight, including a talented teenager from Broken Arrow. Well, back in 1876, an old boy named Bell in Benedict. There she is. Megan Sheehan is only 13 years old, but she can really belt out those country songs. She started singing when she was nine years old. And here she is today joining us. Thanks, Megan, for coming. It's Hi. hard to believe you're just 13 years old and uh, you sound so mature. Uh, thank you very much. Now yes. tell us, you just came back from an exciting trip. Yes, I just came back from Nashville, Tennessee at Fanfare. I did two performances down there. And um, I recorded in Reba McIntyre's recording studio. Reba's? Mac yes. Oh, how fun. Yes, it was very fun. It was great. And what did they tell you? When, when um, you Clay Myers, her producer of Starstruck Enterprise, um, he said that he was very impressed with me, and he invited me back down um, to record some more demos for him. That's exciting. It and you're great. just, what, what grade are you going to be in? I'll be in seventh, or eighth grade. Eighth grade at Sequoia yeah. Middle School. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Well, but you're an honor roll student. Yes, my and honor roll. And do you have time to do anything else? Uh, I like to play basketball, and I'm hoping to play next year for the school. That so. sounds great. Yeah. I, I am so impressed. And I've heard you sing because I got to do a story with you yes. a while back. Yes. But uh, you out there can also see Megan perform tonight 
in about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Can you take the heat? <laughs> Literally. Uh, I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, she'll be followed by two other big acts, Texas Traffic and McBride and the Ride. And the music runs from 6.30 to 10 o'clock on the Miller stage. Tickets cost $5, and you can buy them at the gate. And we're going to be looking forward to hearing you in about 20 minutes, like we said. Now, coming up after weather, we'll talk with Terry McBride. But first, Megan would like to hear you sing. All right. Just like that one? Just take it away. All right. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. Crazy for feeling so blue I knew you'd love me as long as you wanted And then someday you'd leave me for somebody 